At some point during the hide tanning process, and probably at multiple points, you're going to need to wring the hide. So at the very least, this is going to be to achieve that ideal moisture content before dressing the hide, and then to wring out the dressing from the hide. But at any point you've soaked this hide, whether this is to rehydrate the hide after drying, or you're uh, re-soaking it after softening the first time, uh, or you want to get out excess moisture before freezing it so it takes up less space, uh, you're going to want to be able to wring the hide. So uh, I'm going to share with you a technique that works. It's pretty universal across tanners that I've met uh, that is used to get out as much uh, moisture uh, as possible and more than you would think possible. And so you can end up taking an average size deer hide and fitting it into about a quart size Ziploc bag. So it's a fairly small space considering what you can get out of this. So to begin with, you're going to want some sort of horizontal limb or pole. Now, if you have access to something like PVC, that would be ideal. But, uh, you know, you also go out into the woods or, or see what you have around. Um, look for a pole that's maybe two to three inches in diameter and six to eight feet long at minimum. You want it to be stiff and you're going to suspend this horizontally. So this could be between two sawhorses, tied between two trees, uh, have your kids hold it from each end, whatever you can do to just suspend this horizontally. You're going to want it probably somewhere around waist height, and then you can work on it from a seated position. If you want to work on it standing, you could string it up higher. When you get to the point of doing this during dressing, you're going to want it at a height where you can collect the moisture you're straining out of it into a bucket. So at that point, I like around that waist height level, and by the time you wrap up this hide, you can twist it and drain all that moisture back into a five gallon bucket on the ground below. So use the waist height measurement as a starting place and then go from there. So suspend that pole, let's say waist height from each end so it's solidly in place. And you're gonna, you're gonna take your hide, this moist kind of floppy wet hide and drape it over the, the pole. First time I do it, I like to basically just drape it over from the middle bunch it up in the middle as it hangs down on both sides lengthwise you're gonna go ahead and just twist up the hide just twist it up nice this is just with your hands twist it up nice and tight underneath that pole and then I, I'll, I'll grip it really tightly just under that pole with my hands and sort of push down squeegeeing out all the moisture I can so just do that a couple times two three four times just twist squeeze and squeegee all the way down uh, if this is just water you're getting rid of, um, you can, of course, let it just drain under the ground. If this is your dressing solution, the brains or eggs that we'll address later, you really probably want to collect that again, uh, not only to keep it off the ground from your dogs or any other critters that may get it, but to capture it to reuse it again. That's sort of a precious commodity. So five-gallon bucket underneath or a trash can, whatever you're working in, and just roll it up, squeeze, press down, squeegee that out, and collect it. Do that a couple times, and then what you're going to want to do, you may want to set that container aside for a moment, take the hide, pull it out again, and then lay, hold it up vertically, and lay the tail end on the bar, on that pole in front of you, and let the rest hang down. Depending, of course, on the height you're working with, it just may begin to drag on the ground. I like to keep it off the ground, especially if the substrate you're working above is something that'll stick to it, like sand or, or bark. Uh, keep, keep that out of the hide. So drape just the tail end over, and you want the tail end uh, itself to hang over maybe six inches or so, and the rest of the hide hanging over the other side. It doesn't matter which direction. Then bring the other end of the hide, the head end, up from the other side of the pole, and drape it over. Again, overlapping the head end over the other side about six inches. So what you have at this point is your hide stretched out left to right, but head and tail overlapped, so you basically have a large loop of skin, of hide, stretching side to side along this pole. So make sure that's what you have. You may want to smooth out any wrinkles or bubbles or anything you have. And then pick a side, and you want to carefully, very tightly, begin rolling in the edge of the hide. So start, of course, on the top, on, on the part that's on the pole, begin rolling it, but then double check your bottom that's hanging down and make sure that that is also rolling. So just carefully roll it towards the center, top and bottom, make it tucking in any flaps that are sticking out or, um, or any parts of the hide that aren't rolling themselves, tightening it really carefully, trying to get out any air pockets. 
work the first side towards the center and then go to the other side work that towards the center so just making sure they meet approximately into the center of the center of the hide um, obviously there's inconsistencies in the hide but we want each of these two rolls that are coming in to be of a, approximately consistent size so you roll them all the way in and you basically be looking at two large donuts rolled into this to the center so these are like skin donuts uh, rolled into the center hanging down Then what you're going to do is take another small, maybe two or three foot long pole, uh, very smooth. So PVC is great for this. Again, another stick can be good. And you're going to insert that through this loop you've created, through the donut, and let it just sit down in the bottom. Now begins the second part of this, the actual ringing process. So what you want to do is just pick a direction. Um, if you're looking down from the top, you can pick clockwise or counterclockwise doesn't matter we just want to begin to be consistent with this so pick a direction and you're gonna start twisting up that handle just spin 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 and you're gonna see it starts to, to spin and then kink up that that hide and then you're gonna see water moisture start to drain out again if you are trying to capture this it's your dressing solution put that bucket underneath and catch this along along the way Twist it. I like to twist it until it's really streaming out very steadily. Um, and then I'll pause, let it drain for a while until it maybe starts to drip and slow down. Twe uh, squeeze it a little tighter, a little tighter. Sometimes, especially early in the process, I'll, I'll run my hand down the hide to uh, squeegee out uh, moisture that's gathering between the layers of the hide that's been rolled up. So spin, 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 tighten, tighten. The first couple times you do this, it, you may have to sit there and hold this for a minute or so. So just you know, sit up, that's where the chair is comfy or a tree stump, twist that handle, hold, hold, let it drip till it gets to the point that you're reasonably certain there's not a, a huge amount of moisture. Um, back it off, so untwist it all the way. As you get down untwisted, twist it up the other direction. So if you had gone clockwise, you'll go counterclockwise and vice versa. Twist, 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 you'll see more moisture start to drain out, squeegee if necessary, hold until it starts to slow down, squeeze tighter and tighter, you'll twist it until you don't get a, a huge amount dripping out anymore. Now untwist that. So after you have just spun that in both directions, let's say uh, clockwise and then counterclockwise, let's call that one ringing. What you wanna do, you're now looking at a, a slightly kind of twisted up and released donut you want to grab that donut and rotate it 90 degrees. So that's a quarter of the way around its circumference. It doesn't matter which direction. I tend to just grab it in the middle of the front and raise that to the top of the, the bar. So a quarter of the way around, you rotate it. And then repeat your ringing process. So clockwise again, wind it up, squeegeeing if necessary, holding until it slows down, tightening more, and so on. Unwind and repeat counterclockwise. So that's your second ringing. You're going to repeat again, rotating 90 degrees. Ring again. That'll be your third ringing. Unwind both directions. Rotate one more time, 90 degrees. It'll be your fourth ringing, clockwise and counterclockwise. And then unwind. And at that point, that is basically a fully considered round of ringing. So you've been through the ringing process. So you can sit the handle aside unroll both sides of your donut there roll them all the way out your your head and tail maybe kind of stuck together just peel them apart and you can look at your hide depending on where you are in this process um, it may be more or less important how wrung out you get this if you're moving on to dressing or really want to get as much moisture out as possible uh, for freezing or for for rehydrating um, it, the whole hide should really be this fairly tawny tan gray sort of color if you see um, more than a couple portions that are very white very still floppy wet soaking wet um, you want to go ahead and roll this up and ring it some more 
but uh, for the most part, you'll get this tawny sort of look to it. It'll be tougher. It'll feel like it, it almost looks like it's shrunk on you. Um, and you'll maybe get a couple of these patches of like uh, whitish blue gray kind of color. Um, so uh, it's one of those things, again, that with experience, you'll see uh, kind of what works best for rolling this up and wringing it. But going for that tawny color is the ideal. Uh, once you unroll it all the way, if you are going to freeze this, just keep it as small as possible and stuff it in that Ziploc, forcing out any air. If you're going to move on to dressing or want to uh, soften this after dressing um, or want to pull this open and see how it is, uh, just begin to grab the edges of those hide, the hide and pull out and you'll see it, it, it can in some cases like double in size with how it stretches out and because of that moisture you've gotten out of there. So, so that's a basic wringing process. Revisit this again and again throughout the process and at any point to get that moisture out of there you can come back to wringing.